Hey guys, Auspicious Lizzy here and welcome to episode 4 of my FM15 Everton series. This is the January transfer window roundup and the mid-season review where I will go over all the fixtures from the last live comm against Dynamo Kiev up until this point. Um, as you can see, we are up against Leeds in my next game, which is a FA Cup fourth round replay. Uh, that won't be live comm today, but as you can see over here on the right, we are currently sitting in 4th position, 2 points behind Man City, who are in 2nd, but we do have a game in hand over them, so we could potentially go 2nd, um, un unless Arsenal win their game in hand as well, in which we would stay 3rd behind them. So, very, very good so far this season, I'm very happy with how we're doing. And I do put it down to the tactic I'm using. I've, I've made a really good tactic, you know, pretty much straight off the bat. Um, I think after three friendlies, I made this tactic. Um, and it's been, yeah, wonderful. Um, let's get into the transfers, first of all. I'm not sure I actually made any activity um, to mention, really. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't make any transfer activity. I, I did renew a few of these loans, like uh, Luke Garbett and uh, Browning, they're both still on loan, despite being at different clubs and stuff. So, that was throughout the season, and Garbett's uh, been extended at Birmingham with his loan as well. Um, as you can see, we do have a player coming to the club at the start of next season, which is Adrian Rabiot uh, from PSG. Very good young central midfield player that I think will be a very good deep line playmaker for us in the future. Um, we signed him on a Bosman, so I thought that was really good. Um, he's only got another £750 on his wages per week, and I'm very happy with his transfer. I was actually after him in the summer transfer window, but they wanted something like 7 or 8 mil for him, so I'm extremely happy to pick him up on a free transfer, basically. So yeah, very good transfer there. Probably be a replacement for Barry in the future. So, really happy for that, but that is all the transfer activity I've done. I haven't really made any signings this season, apart from Timmy Cahill, which um, I'm kind of happy with. Um, another thing I should mention before we get into the fixtures is that um, Ross Barkley has recently, as just as the uh, transfer window closed, I think it was like two, two days ago, um, complained about wanting to be transferred to Chelsea which I thought was very weird because Chelsea weren't even interested in him on the um, like rumour list on the side of a transfer option. Um, Arsenal and Tottenham were, so I thought that was really weird. Um, I kind of had a bit of a, a, a bit of a fight with him about it, saying that I didn't want him to leave, that we'd be getting Champions League football this season. Um, he still didn't you know, want to stay, despite me promising, promising him that. Um, I apologise if you saw that come up. Um... So yeah, anyway, let's get into the uh, fixtures now. We've had some very, very good fi fixtures over the season. Um, let me go back to the Dynamo Kiev game at home that we won 3-1 in the previous episode. We disappointingly followed that up with a 4-1 loss to league leaders Chelsea at home. Very, very disappointing game there. I was quite upset. Um, they pretty much knocked us knocked us back from, from the outset. Got 2-0 um, up over us, and uh, we couldn't really come back from that. Lukaku got us a goal, but... Costa, John Terry, Quadrado, and Gary Cahill um, gave Chelsea the three points to extend their lead at the top. The next game was against Burnley, and we beat them 6-0 at home. Absolutely thrashed them. Kevin Morales, Hattrick, Stephen Pienaar, Brace, and Darren Gibson also on the score sheet. We then went to Belgium and versus Standard Liege, and we beat them 3-0 in the Europa League. Lukaku, Baines penalty, and a Samuel Eto 92nd minute goal getting us three points in a very important win in, in the uh, Europa League group. We followed it up with another victory, this time away to West Ham at the bowling ground. As you can see, Zarate opened the scoring before a quick two goals in two minutes from Morales and Lukaku, uh, both of our Belgians, getting us all three points in the league. The next game was against Reading in the Capital One Cup fourth round. Beat them 2-1 in a narrow victory. McGeady opened the scoring in the third minute. Jake Yelka also got one off a set piece, and uh, McCleary got one back very late on for Reading. Liverpool was next up, and they thrashed us 4-0 at home. Very disappointing in the Merseyside derby. As you can see, Bellas Brace and a Daniel Sturridge Brace. 
they were playing a 4-4-2, so it was a pretty good formation from them. And uh, really disappointing from us to lose the derby like that. We then beat Standard Liege once again, 3-0 this time, coming at our home ground. Uh, Morales with a brace and a Runa Kone on the score sheet, which is a very rare sight. And uh, Morales with a 9.3 and man of the match performance. We then followed that up in the league with a 3-2 victory away from home at Leicester. Nick Powell and Knockhart on the score sheet for them. Kevin Morales brace again and a schlup own goal with Morales getting a 9.1 and man of the match again. It's been outstanding this season. We then beat Manchester City 3-0 at home. Very interesting result. Uh, Morales again on the score sheet, Lukaku and a Leighton Baines penalty giving us the 3-0 victory there. We followed that with a disappointing 2-1 loss to St. Etienne in the Europa League at home as well. Um, McCarthy got our equaliser before they went in front again five minutes later. As you can see by the stats there, I'll go back into it very quickly. We did dominate them somewhat. Pretty much doubled the shots, doubled the shots in target and 55% possession. Really disappointing to lose that game. We bounced back though, away from home at QPR at Loftus Road in the EPL with Lukaku getting the only goal in the 10th minute there. We followed that up with a home victory um, over Hull FC. 3-1. Lukaku in the first and 81st minute and Leighton Baines also on the score sheet in the 70th. They did have a red card however, but we were way too good for them on the day. We then lost to Southampton who have a fairly decent squad. We lost 1-0 to them um, through a Shane on a long goal, but as you can see, we did dominate possession, however, it was fairly even on the shots. Dynamo Kiev was up next in the Europa League, and we could only manage a 2 all draw against the bottom of the group, um, Kiev. And as you can see, they scored two goals from two shots on target, and again, we absolutely dominated them. Lukaku got a brace for himself, fairly common trend this season between him and Morales. But um, yeah, it was not to be. I could, uh, could only settle for the draw in that one. Stoke was up next in the Capital One Cup quarter final, and we managed to beat them 2 1 in a fairly rotated squad, apart from Morales, who scored in the 9th minute and the 93rd minute. So it was 1 all up until the 93rd minute, 3 minutes into stoppage time, and we picked up the victory there. Very lucky to do so. Sunderland was up next away from home at the Stadium of Light in the Premier League. And we won 3-0 there. Peanut, Distin, and Cahill. Again, dominated possession. Didn't even let them have a shot on target there, which is awesome to see. We then followed that up with another 2-0 victory over Swansea at home. Stephen Peanut and Lukaku on the score sheet again. And we had a lot more shots and shots on target than they did. However, possession was even. West Brom was up next, and we could only manage a 2 all away draw. Not the best result in the world, but as you can see... Quite a few own goals. Kevin Morales got us a goal. Malumbu scored an own goal. John Stones scored an own goal against us. And so did Phil Jagielka. And that was very late on as well. I think that was like the 81st minute or the 82nd minute or something like that. Really disappointing. Again, they only had one shot and target the whole game. We dominated shots in possession. So really un upset about that result there. We then followed up with a really disappointing 3-1 loss away to Chelsea. They are the league leaders, but I was disappointed because, I don't know, I felt like we should have put up more of a fight. Uh, it was 3-1 when Kadira got sent off anyway, but as you can see by the um, shots and shots on target, we were dominating them. We were absolutely dominating them for most of the game. Aidan McGeady got on the score sheet in the 68 minute for us, but we, however, we could not, you know, muster a comeback even after Kadira getting sent off. Newcastle was up next, and we did bounce back away from home in the FA Cup third round, getting a 4-0 victory. Ross Barkley getting a brace in his first two goals of the season. Morales and John Stones also on the score sheet, who has been absolutely immense this season. He's coming along nicely as well, and um, I've slapped a, a 50 mil price tag on him at the moment, because he is wanted by four clubs, as you can see, Arsenal, City, United, and Tottenham. Oh, he's only on 40. I don't know where I got 50 from. I, I might up that to 50 now. Um, Arsenal was up next, and we impressively beat them 4-1, despite, well, it was at home. But as you can see, Barkley again on the score sheet. Distin and a, a brace from the Kaku within two minutes. However, Distin did score an own goal against us, despite getting a goal for us. So, interesting game, and we quite 
did quite well against Arsenal. We followed it up with another big victory, 1-0 over Manchester United at home. Lukaku getting our goal with our only shot and target. Um, and I'm very happy to, you know, sneak a victory there that we probably didn't deserve either. Stoke was up next. Can only manage a one-all draw after those two very impressive games. I think I did rest a few players. As you can see, Oviedo is in there. Coleman's in there. Um, I usually play Stones at right back because Disson's been... He's been quite good since he's, um, you know, featured a bit more throughout the... Well, in this sort of period of the season. Um, and, yeah. A little bit rotated there. Midfield's fairly the same, I suppose. But we absolutely dominated them once again. They had one shot on target for one goal. And, uh, yeah, they scored it. Dominated possession again and shots and shots on target. So, quite impressed but disappointed to only be able to draw that game. Next up was the Capital One Cup semi-final first leg. We beat Southampton 2-0 at home. Lukaku and Morales on the score sheet there. And we then faced Leeds in a home game, which was a boring nil all fourth round FA Cup game. Um, obviously, my next game is actually the replay of that before we beat Southampton 2-1 away from home, and St. Mary's, and uh, booked ourselves into the Capital One Cup Final. So we will have a Cup Final Livecom um, episode towards the end of the season, which I'm very happy about. But we did win this 2-0, both goals coming from Leighton Baines, and uh, James Ward-Prowse got one for Southampton, but it didn't really matter. And the final game I played before I started this episode was against Newcastle, and we beat them 3-1 at home. Flamini on the score sheet with a brace from Lukaku as well. And uh, Moisander there, uh, summer transfer, getting on the score sheet late on for them. So that is basically all the fixtures done. Um, we'll show you a bit of the league table right now and how it stacks up. As you can see, we are in fourth, like I mentioned. It's fairly close, apart from Chelsea up there. If we can win, we will be five points behind the league leaders. So... You know, I'm not sure if it's possible, but I will try my hardest to to at least get the top four um, and try and get Champions League for next season. Um, I'm not sure if we can challenge for the title, but, you know, anything's possible, I suppose. That's pretty much going to wrap this episode up, guys. If you have enjoyed, please drop a like rating. I think I'm doing really well with Everton so far, and um, I'm really enjoying playing FM15. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. We've got... The Europa League first knockout round against Zenit coming up as well, um, which will be exciting. Hopefully we can go pretty far in that competition as well. Um, also still in the, uh, in the FA Cup, which is impressive. We've got to, got to beat Leeds. I don't know how we didn't beat him in the first um, in the first game, but whatever. Um, I, I assume we'll get past him now. So yeah, guys, that is it for the episode. Please drop a like, head over to my channel and subscribe if you are a new viewer, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.